from Manhattan, it's The Cube. Covering AWS Summit New York City 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. And welcome back here on The Cube, the flagship broadcast of SiliconANGLE TV where our colleague John Furrier likes to say we extract the signal from the noise. Doing that here at AWS Summit here in uh, Midtown along with Stu Miniman, I'm John Wallace, and we're joined now by Ben Newton, who's the analytics lead at Sumo Logic. And I said, Ben, what, what is an analytics lead? If you had to give me the, the, the uh, elevator speech on that, and you said you're the geek who stays up all night and fiddles with stuff. Well, I, that's why I joined uh, Sumo Logic. I, just, I, I love finding the things that other people didn't find. And when I first joined, I was staying up until 2 a.m. every night playing around with the data. My wife started getting worried about me, but that, that was the path <laughs> that I set up. You're the guy that looks at the clouds and sees the man's yeah, nose, Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. It's just, it's in data, that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. You know? right, so I hear this concept, but we'll jump in here about um, continuous intelligence, right? Yeah. I mean, it's machine data, and, and there's just this constant stream. I mean, how do you see that? How do you define that? How does that play with how you, what you do? How yeah, you, no, no, absolutely. So, I've been around a little while, uh, and uh, when, I, when I started out, you know, there, was, there was a particular set of problems we were trying to solve. You know, we had the $100,000 Sun Microsystem servers, you drop them on the floor, somebody gets fired. But it was, it was a, very, a very particular problem set. What's happened now is that the market is really changing. And so the amount of data is just growing exponentially. So I, I kind of have my own conjoined triangle slide that I like to show people, but Basically, things are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We're going from you know, these monolithic services, the microservices, the IOT, and the scale is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what that means is that the amount of data being produced is just bigger than anyone ever imagined. I, I was just looking up some numbers that uh, Barclay says it's going to be a 16 zettabytes. I had to look that up. That's a billion terabytes by 2020. It's like watching the whole Netflix catalog 30 million times. <laughs> that's the amount of data that customers are dealing with and that's what's exciting about the space, I think. So, if I remember at reInvent, you see Sumo is like the booth when you walk in. They actually had Sumo wrestlers well <laughs> yeah. one, one year. Uh, Reminds me, just wrestling, I've got all that data. You know, how do I take advantage of that? How do I democratize the, the analytics on data, you know, what, 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 what were the big challenges? You said customers used to be, you know, dropping a server on the floor. How are they getting their arms around this? How are they really leveraging their data and leveraging yeah, analytics? Yeah, I got more? to wrestle one of those sumos. That was a, <laughs> he let me win a little bit. And then, then it was over. Did you have to wear the outfit? No, luckily no, They're good for everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I think, you know, a few years ago, it was all about big data. And it was all about like how much data could get in. And I think you saw some announcements from AWS today really people are getting their hands around it. Now it's all about fast data, like what can I do in real time? And that's what people are struggling with. They have this massive amount of data that's just sitting there unused and people aren't actually getting value out of it to drive the business. And that's really like the next goal, I think over the next few years, is how can uh, our customers and, and, and these companies get more value out of the data they have without having to invest in all this costly infrastructure to do it. Yeah, Ben, I think you know, a few years ago it was big data, I'm going to take the compute and I'm going to move it to the data. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, last year at reInvent, uh, talked to a lot of the companies that are working with Hadoop and the like, and they said the data lakes are now in the public cloud. Yeah. But now I've got edge computing, I kind of have the data center, the public cloud, and the edge, and you know, I'm never going to get all my data in the same place, so how, are, how am I managing all of those various pools of data? Yeah. Uh, you know, how do I make sure I get the right data in the right place so I can make the decisions that I need to when I need to? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so a lot of what we're trying to do now is trying to help customers get the data in the way they want, just like you said. So before it might have been about like, here's our standard way and here's our agent, you go install that. Now we're trying to provide ways for them to get the data in they want. We're providing APIs and basically trying to move towards becoming more of a platform so the customers are sending us with third party tools they like. Because you know, I was talking to one of my developers and I asked him, if somebody came and said to you, you need to change the way you produce your data to use this product, what is he going to say? And he used a four letter word I can't repeat. That's how they think about it. They don't want to have to change the way they do things. So what we do is we provide lots of different ways of getting from multiple clouds, from multiple tools, open source tools. We don't care and making it easy as possible to get the data in. You know, if, if, um, if, if Stu and I were different clients of yours, um, 
uh, you know, what matters to Stu is much different than what matters yeah. to me, right? So how do you go about uh, de helping determine access to data at, in the context that I want it, yeah. as opposed to the data that Stu wants at the time that he wants it? Because it's just not about yeah. finding real time stuff, right? It's about also finding value in it and yeah, helping absolutely. me put action to it. No, absolutely, John. So I, I think there's a couple different ways. One is making it easy to get the data in, like what you talked about. Another way is actually building a cost model that matches how you use the data. The, the typical way the analytics tools have done in the past, including us before, was kind of a one size fits all model. So last year, we, we announced our unified logs and metrics product, which was trying to appeal to long-term trending. And so now, what we're moving towards as well is providing a, you know, a model that allows our customers, we call it CloudFlex, that allows them to organize their data in the way that makes the most sense. So maybe you want to keep your security data for a year, but you want to keep your operational data for seven days. That's fine. But organizing the way that makes most sense to you and match your cost to your data. I mean, this is the path that I think AWS has really set, we're, that we're basically meeting customers where they're at, allowing them to use it. And the second thing is, is also making it easy for their customers to get to that data and use it in the way they like. So you make it easy to get in, cost efficient model, and then make it really easy for the users to get to that data. Yeah. Then, who, who are you working with the most? Maybe you're working across all these, but Amazon was talking a lot about the data scientists this morning, all the ETL uh, challenges yeah. that are happening. Uh, I know there's a big booth for developers. Uh, I expect there's probably something with Lambda uh, yeah. that you're involved in, but what, what are some of those you know, hot button issues that you're seeing across some of the customer roles? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, I think one thing where you say that with data scientists, I mean, we all know that there's a data scientist shortage. We have, you know, we have data scientists at Sumo Logic. They're, they're hard to find. And so part of this is making it, one of the hot button issues is can I get people that don't have that background access to the data? And so, you know, I may want to geek out and writing queries and staying up to 2 a.m. writing that. Most people don't. That's <laughs> right, not surprising. All right. So a lot of that is how can you make it easier for you know, our developers, for example, that have another job to do, this is not their main job, to get access to that data and use it. And so for example, one of the things we've done for customers, we did for ourselves at Sumo, is even making that data accessible to other parts of the business. So for example, our uh, sales reps at Sumo Logic actually use that data to drive their customer interaction. So they can go to a customer and say, hey, we're seeing how you're using the tool, we think you could get value out of these other five things and work with them in a constructive way. Or for example, uh, a couple other clients I've worked with, they're actually using the data in their marketing departments and their sales departments and putting this up on the wall so that other parts of the business are getting you know, access to it beyond DevOps and IT ops, which is huge value to them, right? Sumo, I'm just curious, Sumo Logic. Um, where, where from, uh, the name, I mean, what, what's, what's What's the genesis of that? What well, the, uh, well, the official story is that it's about sumo big data. The, uh, the, the real story is that our, our founder, Christian, loves dogs, and he has a dog named Sumo. And so it, it really fit well. It fit the name because big data, but also it fit it because he had, a, right. he had a dog named Sumo. I'll buy that, just curious. <laughs> ben, thanks for being with us. We appreciate the time here on theCUBE. You could have taken them, I know, if you really wanted to. I appreciate that. You could have, no doubt. <laughs> ben Newton, uh, our analytics lead at Sumo Logic, joining us here on theCUBE, back with more from AWS Summit in New York right after this break.